morning and welcome to all. You may be seated. How many have had a challenging week this week? Let's raise your hand. God can see that. It's a, you know, every week is a challenging week in some people's lives, and uh, I'm no exception to that. <laughs> Satan is not happy, and uh, the more problems that we have, the more we realize how close the second coming of Jesus is, because Satan's trying real hard to bring us all down, is he not? Amen. Yes, he is indeed. So, but we serve a God who loves us, and he died for us, and so we are just uh, giving victory and uh, praise to him this morning. Amen. Glad you're all out here this morning. Give praise to Jesus. Okay. For a congregational prayer this morning, are there you know, any special... Why don't we just do it this way, rather than trying to write all these down. If you have a special need or have a special prayer, raise your hand, and you know, then the Holy Spirit can read your minds right now, and he can record all those things better than I can try to jot them down and try to memorize them, each one. We thank you all for being here, and we're so pleased that God is still on the throne. Amen. So we pray that uh, you would be with us as we pray. So we'll have our prayer, and then all those that would like to kneel, go ahead and kneel. If you want to remain seated, you can do that. So we'll have the prayer, which will be up on the screen. Okay. Father in heaven, we consider it a privilege to come before your throne of grace. Lord, we know that we read in the Bible, as it was in the days of Noah, that would also be at the coming of the Son of Man. And so, Lord, we just want to give you the praise and glory and honor that you're so worthy of and lord as you look around i can't help but you're heartbroken over many people in this world who don't have time for you this morning lord we complain because our children have fallen away from the church but yet we have not been good examples to them by attending church on a weekly basis we cry out to you O oh lord and say lord give me deliverance but yet we don't take time to thank you throughout the week so, Father, in each life here today, we're thankful that they're here today, and we're thankful for Brother Brian is going to bring the message today, and for Keith is going to be asking for the offering soon, and for the pianist that's playing, and for all the singers that are singing, and for all the congregation, we're thankful that we're here this morning. We give you the praise and glory and honor that you are so worthy of. We can't wait to go to heaven, Father, so we can bow at your feet. Throw our crowns if we have them at the feet of Jesus. So, Father, be with us until you come in the clouds of heaven. And when you do, would you grant us all a well done, thou good and faithful servant. Father, you saw the hands of the people whose uh, hearts are burdened this morning with some special thing that they need. Lord, whether it's a sickness or it is a calamity in their family or whether it's a financial need or whatever it might be, health or otherwise, Father, we just pray that you would draw close to each one and meet the needs of this congregation and congregations like this around the world. You are such an omnipotent God, omniscient, knowing everything. So we just pray, that, Father, that you, uh, because you're an omnipresent God, you are with everybody who's praying simultaneously, and your angels are recording each message going up to you now. Be with us and guide in this church service. Help us, Lord, that we would give praise and glory and honor to your precious and holy name. Guide and direct in the activities of this church today and be with us throughout the day. We pray this in Jesus' lovely and precious name. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Today's scripture reading is Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. You want to turn to that? Okay. Living sacrifices to God. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is th that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Thank you, Pam, this morning for setting the tone for worship. How beautiful is the body of Christ. Before we get started, I want to make an announcement. I had a privilege uh, yesterday of uh, being up at NOAA. I had some uh, business regarding the school and got to talk about a very exciting 
uh, program they have this evening. How many here are familiar with the term Indian summer? So, you know, I don't really hear that a lot. When I was a kid growing up here in Ohio, that was used all the time by weathermen. Anybody here know what an Indian summer is? Are we experiencing one today? That's right. It's, uh, it's worse. We have the blessing of having summer bleed into fall. And what great weather we have had. I love the fact that my wife and I, we had our windows open all week. And it is a great way to sleep. It's, it's a very sound sleep when you have fresh air. So this evening at 5 o'clock up at NOAA, we are having a Vespers followed by a Harvest Fest that starts at 5 o'clock. It's going to be outside, so bring your chairs and uh, looking forward to meeting up there and having a wonderful way to close out the Sabbath in our beautiful school that we have up there. All right. Most times when I get ready to preach, I write down a sermon footnote. I did that last night. But traditionally, I always get up early in the morning because I don't know about you, but that's when the Holy Spirit speaks to me the most, is in the morning. Because it's quiet. I'm more receptive. If anybody knows me, I am not a night person. Past 10 o'clock, my mood transforms into something that it's not... Uh, going to be friendly. I want my sleep. I like sleep and I like it quiet at night. But in the morning, I'm a morning person, so this morning I had a stroke of inspiration. Naomi, you have inspired me. How many believe that you never stop learning? Well, Naomi, you always talk about the meaning of words. So, been a long time since I've been in school, but man, I wish I would have had you and Dr. Coleman as teachers because I love knowledge and I love to learn. So this morning, the sermon is entitled Christian Behavior. So we're going to look up the definition of being a Christian. How many people here know what the definition is? Well, let's go back over it. A Christian, the definition of a Christian is relating or to profess Christianity or its teachings. A person who has received Christian baptism or is a believer in Christianity. So that's the definition of Christianity. Behavior. I found this one real, well, a lot more than I thought. I looked up this morning the definition of behavior. So let's look that up. The danger of doing something on the phone is competing with advertisements. So let's try this again here. All right, behavior. Ah, the definition of behavior in the way in which one acts or conducts oneself, especially towards others. And how many here know that there are four types of behavior? Well, we're fixing to find this out together. There are four types of human behavior. Now, we have two influences in this world, right? We have Christ and we have Satan. So I'm going to read out four types of behavior and tell me what you think is behind this type of behavior. The first personality type is optimistic. Do you think that's a Christ-like characteristic behavior or Satan? All right, optimistic. How many people here are optimistic? I tend to be more pessimistic, but I'm working on becoming optimistic. The second one is pessimistic. Do you think being a pessimistic person is of God or of Satan? All right, so maybe I need to work on being more optimistic instead of so pessimistic. Ah, this one, every child has. And I think that's why Christ wants us to be childlike, and that is trusting. How many adults here are trusting? Too trusting. 
How many people find as you get older, you struggle more and more with being trusting? Yeah. Maybe life's experiences have made it harder for us to be trusting. Is being trusting a Christ-like characteristic or from Satan? Christ-like. All right. The last type of behavior is envious. What do you think that comes from, being envious? Satan. Now, of those four, what do you think is the most dominant behavior characteristic in human beings? Optimistic, pessimistic, trusting, or envious? Envious. Here's the percentages. They say that optimistic, pessimistic, and trusting makes up about 20%, where envy, envious makes up about 30%. And what is a byproduct of being envious? Anybody know? Jealousy. Jealousy. I found that very interesting. So, I didn't even expect this when I did, when I was putting this together, but, well, it's kind of good to go on a phone because it will lead you into other things. And I found that very interesting about human behavior. Now, we're talking this morning about Christian behavior. Are we... In this life, are we preparing for heaven? Yes. All right? So we're in training right now, right? Here on this earth. Where do we learn about the virtues of heaven? Where's that found? Where? In the Bible. I like acronyms, and I've heard this one one time probably on radio. That's where I, I li get most of my news. You know what Bible stands for, the acronym? Isn't that great? I love that. I love that. Basic instructions before leaving earth. I consider it my owner's manual, right? Anybody that is a mechanic, we work out of manuals so we can maintain things. And I look at the Bible as my owner's manual. Everything that I need to know to live a happy, healthy, successful life is found in God's Word. So this morning, how many here want to have a Christ-like character? Is that something you desire? All right. Well, let's go into the owner's manual and let's see if we can find ways to be more successful in our Christian behavior. Keith, you did a good job this morning reading, you know, we're always looking for preachers, Keith, so if you feel that you would like to preach, talk to me afterwards and we can get you lined up, all right? <laughs> okay. I like that what you said this morning. Was I daydreaming or did you say this is your safe place? Did you say that? Yes. Do you, do you feel that church is your safe place? Amen. Now I will say I probably feel the most safe at home, especially in the morning when my wife and I are studying. I feel very safe and very connected. But church is right up there. And I mention this almost every time I'm up at the pulpit. but I consider you guys my family. Amen. Now, families come in all shapes and sizes and characteristics, and it reminds me of this church. Do you realize how special this church is? When I look at this church, this is something different than what I have experienced over the years and that most churches that I belonged to had people that looked like me. That's just how it was. Heaven is not going to look like one particular person. Heaven is going to be a little bit of everything. And I love the fact that this church, I guess they call it diverse, right? We have a, we have a picture of what Lorain County looks like, right? And it is nice. It is nice to be around such a diverse group of people, especially people that come from other countries. My wife says that I like to interrogate people. Well, I talk to Steve a lot about his, Steve, about your country. It's probably safe to say I will never have time with my vacation schedule to be able to come over and see the beautiful country in which you grew up in. So the next best thing is to ask you what it was like, where you come from. What, what made your country so special? The people, the culture. 
It is, it brings, how many here like variety? Love variety, especially in food. And one beautiful thing about living in Cleveland is it's got a lot of ethnic people and they all bring their food, which makes Cleveland a great place to go eat. So I love that. All right, before I get way off track on another subject, let's talk about Christian behavior. Actually, food does fall into that. Lately, I've been doing sermons out of our 28 fundamental beliefs. So, this week, on that theme, number 22 is Christian behavior. So, we're going to talk about Christian behavior. We are called to be a godly people. Did you know that? We are called to be a godly people who think, feel, and act in harmony with biblical principles in all aspects of our spiritual and personal lives. Is that a good thing? No, maybe. Is walking, talking, and spending time with God a good thing? All right, is it an easy thing? Takes a lifetime, right? All right, for the Spirit to recreate in us the character of our Lord, we involve ourselves only in those things that will produce Christ-like purity. Health and joy in our lives. You want to live a happy, healthy life? Let's find out. This means that our amusement and entertainment should meet the highest standards of Christ. Christian taste and beauty while recognizing cultural differences, our dress is to be simple, modest, and neat, befitting those whose true beauty does not consist of outward adornment, but in the imperishable ornament of a gentle and quiet spirit. Do you like that? I am a very blessed person that I am married to a very kind person. My wife is so easy to get along with. She is always friendly, and she has a servant spirit. She finds it very hard to do things for herself. And she was a fantastic mother and a great companion, and I love that about her. And when you're young, you look at things. Is beauty important, more important when you're young or when you're older? Now, don't get me wrong, I still like beauty. My wife still is very attractive to me. But I find the personality. After 34 years of being married, we have grown closer. And when we started out, it was definitely the physical attraction because that's all we knew. We were just a new couple at the time. But over the years, we have shared in life's experiences. She's been there for the good, and she's been there for the bad. It also means that because our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, we are to care for them intelligently. Do we have instruction on how to care for our body? Man, we are a blessed people, folks. We have a health message that was at least 100 maybe 150 years ahead of the world. Now the world is just now catching up with the health message that we have had for all these years. It also means that because our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, we are to care for them. Along with adequate exercise and rest, we are to adopt the most healthful diet possible and abstain from the unclean foods identified in the scriptures, such as alcoholic beverages, Tobacco and the irresponsible use of drugs and narcotics are harmful to our bodies. We are to abstain from them as well. Instead, we are to engage in whatever brings our thoughts and bodies into the dis discipline of Christ, who desires our wholesomeness, joy, and goodness. If you want to get close to God, where do you go? Anybody here have a special place you go when you want to connect with the, with the Lord? Nature. Nature. 
I'm with you, Helen. That is, for me, boy, nothing beats, and, and I'm so glad to be back in Ohio. Nothing beats going out in the woods. The sound of the woods here in, in northeast Ohio cannot be duplicated where we're from. Would you agree, Sherry? The birds, are, they sing so beautifully here in Ohio. That smell that I used to tell my wife years ago I missed about Ohio, that smell of rot and decay. That is a very comforting smell to me. I don't know why. Yeah, you cannot, you cannot reproduce that in Oklahoma or Texas. It's too dry there, but that smell is so familiar. I, I kayak on the Cuyahoga River. It has a distinct smell. Not a dirty smell, not what you think. It is actually so clean now that bald eagles and beaver now uh, go on the waters. It is an amazing to, to see wildlife right in downtown Cleveland. Let's go into the Bible and let's talk about some ways to improve our Christian behavior. This morning, let's go back over Romans 12, 1 through 2. Romans 12, 1 through 2 was our text for this morning, and let's revisit that. It's titled, A Living Sacrifice to God. 12, verse 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world. Is that an easy thing, to not be conformed to this world? Is the world all around us? Boy, I love the internet and I love my cell phone because I like knowledge and it has everything, every library in the world is on that phone. But with that comes all the world's junk too, right? Do we have a lot of knowledge now? It's got to be scary for, I know it's scary for me. Oh, I always had to make sure I had a good relationship with my kids growing up because, A, they know a whole lot more about computers than I do. And if they wanted to hide all the stuff on there, they could have done it easily because I'm just too ignorant to know where they hide all the stuff. So it was important to have a trusting relationship with your children. Now, what about Christ? Did Christ... Was it a risk coming to this earth? Was it a risk for Christ? Did he withhold anything? Or did he give his all? He gave everything. Is it inappropriate for God to ask that we give our all back to him? Do you like that? Do you like... I think of this kid's songs. I think of songs, I always go back to the kid's songs. As he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. I think of the relationship, relationship, relationship. Everything about God is relationship. Everything in the Bible is for our good. Let's continue on this theme. Let's go to Exodus 20, verse 15. This one actually kind of surprised me. One beautiful thing, for those of you that ever consider preaching, one beautiful thing out of going through the 28 beliefs is it has all the verses. And in Exodus 20, 15, I found this, I'm not going to say out of place, but I found it kind of amazing when it comes to Christian behavior in Exodus 20, 15, that this was brought up. Exodus 20, 15, and tell me if this is a problem in this world today. Exodus 20.15 says, you shall not steal. Problem? Yes. How many here know that we have an election coming up next week? I'm not here to promote any candidate, but I, you, you, I mean, if you listen to the radio, you just can't miss. One of the guys I think he, I don't know, he's a prosecutor for the state of Ohio. I don't even know what party it is. It really doesn't matter. But since he's been in office, he has found $5.6 billion that have been misused by politicians in the state of Ohio. 
$5.6 billion. So, would life be a better place if theft was not a part of, of, uh, of the world in which we live in? I talked to a security guard years ago. He worked at Target, of all places. He said that stores can only absorb 20% theft. After that, they can't make a profit and they have to shut down. And that there are stores all over the country now. You know, Sherry was telling me, like Walmart is like closing down everywhere. I don't know what is going on with people nowadays, but I've heard terms like, when times get tough, my family's not gonna starve, I will steal. I will rob, I will clean the store shelves out. So stealing must be important for one, it's part of the Ten Commandments. My dad kind of had two rules growing up. Boy, and stealing was one of them. Don't lie and don't steal. And uh, boy, I would definitely get recognized if I did either one of those. All right, let's continue on in Psalms 106, verse 3. Psalms 106, verse 3. Verse 3 states, Ah, you want a blessing? It says, blessing, Blessed are those who keep justice, and he who does righteousness at all times. Is that a characteristic that you look for? Especially when you're dealing with your finances, right? You definitely want somebody that is righteous at all times. Is Christ righteous at all time? And we took on, what is our name? We call ourselves what? So we are to emulate Christ, right? Does Christ want us to be righteous in our dealings with one another and with the world? And does that make a difference? Does that make a difference with people when you deal with them in a just manner? I believe it does. All right, let's continue on. 1 Corinthians 6.19. 1 Corinthians 6.19. We're going to go through these pretty quickly. All right, 1 Corinthians 6.19 and 20. And let's see what the Lord says about this. I'm going to read a commentary I have first. It says, all, are, all, are all our God's property. Would you agree? All men have been bought with an infinite price. Do you agree? We were bought with a price. So if you've ever wondered about your worth, boy, God bought us with a, you can't even put a monetary value on the price that God's spent to reclaim us. The whole treasures of heaven into this world, he, by giving us Christ all heaven, by giving us in Christ all heaven, God has purchased the will, the affections, the minds, the soul of every human being, whether believer or unbeliever, all men are the Lord's property. Verse 19 says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought, with, bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. If we kept that in mind every day as we wake up, who we are, how we were purchased, I don't know about you, but that makes me feel special is a terrible word, but I can't think of anything uh, more appropriate about how God feels about us. We are, 
I need to learn more words. We are special in the sight of God. 2 Corinthians. Let's just turn over a little bit to 2 Corinthians 10.5. And I can't stress how important this one is. 2 Corinthians 10.5 Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Are we in a mind war right now? Man, like no other. I mean... I like social media like everybody else, and I don't know how many times I will be looking at a subject and something pops in that has nothing to do with what you looked up, and you have to delete and try to get rid of it because the content in which you were looking at has nothing to do with the content that's popping up, and Satan is in everything, absolutely everything. Guard your mind. Where does sin start? Starts in your mind, right? So God says, guard it. All right. Let's go into Philippians 4 8. Philippians 4 8. All right. Philippians 4 8 says, finally, brethren, whatever thing. Oh, this is, this is, this is one of, to me, one of the most beautiful passages of Scripture. Finally, br- brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. I don't know about you, but there is a lot of beautiful things that God tells us to meditate on. So, as we are developing our mind and character, meditate on these things. Even in this sin-scarred world, God has beauty everywhere. Even in death. I look at fall. You know, it's amazing how those trees go out. It's beautiful. It's kind of ugly this week. We were just talking about that coming in this morning. The difference that one week... Made. I told Sherry last week, we got to go out and hike. got to go out and hike because these leaves are going to fall real quick. I didn't think it was going to be that quick. What a change one week made. 1 Timothy 2, 9 through 10. 1 Timothy. Now we're going to get a little more personal. We ready? Remember, God has the best in mind for us. So as we go into this... We're going to talk about women, and then we're going to talk about men. And I'm going to beat up on men more because, A, I am one, and two, the role that men are supposed to play in their family. What are men supposed to be in their family? The priest. Is this an area that we have struggled with in our church, with men being the spiritual head of their household? Is this an area that men have struggled in? In 2022, what is the role of men thought of in the world in general nowadays, in the secular world? Mm, Maybe in your generation, Jerry, you would be right. In 2022, what role does a man have anymore? Zero? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it, uh, it, it can be very grim. But my God said that I am to be the spiritual head of my household. And we're going to talk about women first, so I kind of got it in reverse order. But 1 Timothy 2, 9 and 10. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with property and moderation, not with braided hair or gold or pearls, or costly clothing, but which is proper for women professing godliness with good works. So what is attractive in the eyes of God? 
and I should say men, what is attractive in the eyes of godly men? Is it the world's adornment? I am very glad that God made women the way, made them so much different than men. The nurturing part of women. I, I'm so glad that there is a distinct difference in the way God made us. Has the world been successful in destroying our marriages, in our marriages struggling? And it's not been that long of a time period that uh, we have seen a very big decline. Maybe one of the problems is the role that men are, have been subjugated to now in the secular world. Well, man, I said we weren't going to just pick on the ladies. We're not. Let's talk about men. Titus 2, 11 through 12. Titus 2, 11 through Eleven through twelve. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly. In when ages of past, in when present world. Present world. Is this becoming less and less prominent in the world? Living a godly life? What about in God's church? Are we holding our men, are we holding our leaders to the high standards that God has set? And should we be? All right, we're going to finish this up with 1 John chapter 2, verse 6. First John chapter 2, verse 6. And it says, He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Now, who are we talking about here? Okay. How can we walk the way Christ walked? Is that an impossibility? Mm. Starts with what? Will you ever follow and obey something that you do not love. I mean, I guess you could probably threaten somebody and they would follow you to a point. I'm going to close up as we are. Why is this important? Why is this part of our 28 beliefs, Christian behavior? Is it important to look different, act different, think different than the world? And why? Why is this so important? Why was this part of our founding beliefs? The world is not our home. Mm. Has the world changed a lot since 1863? Yeah. When, when the church was founded? I don't consider myself an old guy. I graduated in 1984, but wow, has the world changed a lot? <coughs> We are on a journey right now on this earth. God is, well, he's brilliant. I mean, absolutely brilliant. The way he, one, he gave us a free will, right? Two, he is allowing us in this lifetime to choose not only whom we will serve, but where we will be eternal, right? So Christ is put out the invitation for each and every one of us as we go through this life here on this earth. It is my prayer that each and every one of us 
spend time. Spend time in the Bible. Get to know who Christ is. Not just, how many here like rules? Anybody here love rules? Rules, 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 rules. All right. Do we have to have rules in this world, right? We have to have rules. We have to have order. My hope is for each and every one, I hope it is for you, that as you study the basic and basic instruction before leaving earth, the Bible, that you are so convinced that God's way not only is the right way, but that you love it so much. You realize if we follow what he asks us to do and make it part of our everyday life, what's heaven going to be like for us? Is it going to be foreign? No, it's just going to be a continuation of what and how we have lived here on earth. With the one major exception, we get to be in the presence of Christ. And wow, that is when education is really going to start. That first Sabbath that we are in heaven, could you imagine what worship is going to be like? And we will all be able to sing and praise the Lord. As we finish out this sermon today, you know, as I got talking, I don't even know if I went into prayer. So let's finish this up with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, you've given us absolutely everything. As we have been studying, everything started, starts with the cross. Starts with your son coming down to this earth and giving his all to redeem lost mankind. Lord, you have given us a free will. You quietly knock at our heart, Lord. You invite us into, you, into your kingdom, Lord, into a life-saving relationship with you. Father, you've given us instruction, a code of conduct, may we say, on how to live our lives here on this earth because this is a reflection of how our life will be in heaven. Lord, may we spend the time daily walking with you. May lives be added to the kingdom because of the Christian behavior we exude in our workplace and in our sphere of influence. Lord, may your Holy Spirit baptize each and every person that is willing to be an instrument for you. In Jesus' name I pray.